every Python project video because you get to see the results of the code. And here we've got an interactive chart of the Ethereum prices going back for the past year. Hey friends, welcome to the video. And you've probably seen that at the moment there's a lot of movement in the cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin and Ethereum hitting all time highs and decentralized finance starting to become really popular in the space. In some of my previous videos, I showed you how you can go about building your own virus in Python as well as cracking passwords for academic purposes only, of course. But today we're gonna do something slightly different. In today's beginner friendly tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own candlestick chart that will show the prices for Ethereum for the past year. This really cool interactive chart is going to allow you to be able to step back in time to understand price activity for Ethereum. Not only are you going to learn a lot about candlesticks in the context of trading and investing, but you're also going to learn how you can reach out to the Coinbase API to grab historical financial data and then use the Plotly library in Python to put that onto a chart. I love projects like this because it allows you to get fun with Python and work on a real world application that you can use. Please, if you haven't already, make sure you smash that like button so I can continue to make more fun Python project videos like this. By the way, I'm giving away a free guide to learning Python. So if that's something that you want to get your hands on, check and click the link in the description below. With that said, buckle your seatbelts and let's get started. Right, so what I've done is I've just created a project and I've created a main.py file. And in here, we're going to start off with the classic, well, I'll make it big actually. In here, we're going to start off with the classic if name main check. Now, if you've watched my previous Python project videos, you know that I like to start off with this because it tells Python exactly what uh, function we want to run when we start the program or what code we want to run. And in this case, we're going to run the main function and then we'll leave it empty for now. Right, so now that we've got that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called Coinbase API product now we'll just call it candlesticks URL, right? And as you can probably guess, we're gonna be using the Coinbase API to get our data. Given that the text is quite large, I'm gonna to have to put this on a separate line. So in Python, you can do that using the backslash. And then in this case, I'm gonna leave the string empty for now. And what we'll do is we'll quickly head over to the API. So essentially the endpoint that we're gonna hit is uh, the Coinbase Pro API. And uh, for the most part, um, it's free, which is quite cool. And what you can do is you can retrieve, um, they've got a bunch of endpoints, right? And here you can get back the candles. And by the way, I'm gonna get onto candles in a second. Um, but essentially you can get back candles for a given uh, uh, product. And the product that we're gonna be looking at, of course, today is we're gonna be looking at ETH uh, USD. So uh, that's the way to get it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this, copy that and come back to my editor. And the base URL is HTTPS um, API.pro.coinbase.com followed by the endpoint. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna just make this a bit smaller so you can see products and then afterwards the product ID. So we're gonna be actually passing that in when we, um, as we write the code. And there's one more thing that we're gonna do and we're gonna call a, uh, we're gonna have a parameter called granularity, right? And again, we're gonna leave that uh, for us to fill in later. And granularity essentially allows us to be able to specify the duration of the candle. So I've mentioned candle this few times, so it's now, uh, it's probably best to explain it. Right, so I'm on Investopedia, which is a great website to learn more about investing and trading. And here I've got an image of a candlestick. As you can tell in the middle, this is essentially what a candlestick looks like. What a candlestick does is it tells a story about the price of a stock and how it changes throughout the day. It'll tell you the highest price of that stock in the day. It'll also tell you what it opened at. So we know stock markets open and close. So it'll tell you, you know, when it was opened, uh, or, uh, when the stock market opened, what price was it? And when it closed, what uh, price was it? And it's useful to be able to have all of this information. And I suppose a candlestick, it's really good in the sense that it gives you all of that visually without you having to, you know, look at a list or a spreadsheet of just raw numbers. Now this entire candlestick represents price activity for the day but sometimes traders want to be able to see uh, a more concentrated volume so they might want to see price activity for the last hour in which case the candlestick would represent price activity for that hour right or you could have like four hours or 10 hours or 24 hours or you can even have it by month now there's one other thing that you need to know with respect to candlesticks and that is their color a red candle basically indicates that a stock um, closed the market at a lower price. So say for example, when the market opened, the stock was $50. Um, 
if it dropped to $48, the candle would be red because um, if it drops to $48 and the market closed, that means it closed at a lower price than it started with. Taking the same example, say a stock opened at $50 and then rose up to about $55. So when the market closed, it finished at $55. And that basically means it closed at a higher price than it opened with. And in that case, you're gonna get a green candle. To summarize, a candlestick gives a very good story about price activity for a given stock in a given time period. So as I mentioned, uh, the candlesticks that we looked at earlier, this reflected price activity for the day. But of course, you can have candlesticks that go longer than a day, or you can have uh, them be shorter than a day. And so that's enough about candlesticks. Let's get back to some code. Right, so we're gonna start off by making a request to the Coinbase API, and we're gonna do that using the request library. So I'm gonna do request.get. I'm gonna pass in the URL um, or this variable here. And we left uh, two blanks that we need to fill, right? So we're gonna use the dot format function in Python and we're gonna need to pass in two values here. The first thing that we're gonna pass in is the cryptocurrency product. In other words, basically the uh, thing that's trading at the moment that we want to get the candlestick data for. And for that, we're gonna pass in ETH slash USD. You're probably asking why not just ETH? Um, and the reason why is because when you buy Ethereum, you have to pay for it, right? And to pay for it, you have to pay with something. And the way you pay for it is either US dollars, or you can also pay for it in uh, British pounds, or you can pay for it even with Bitcoin, right? There are different ways you can purchase Ethereum, and each of those have different price datas um, because they operate at different conversion rates. So because of that, um, you need to pass in the pet. So in this case, I'm gonna pass ETH uh, or pass ETH slash USD. The second thing that we want to pass in is the uh, granularity. And essentially, when I mentioned that candlesticks represent a given time period, and I mentioned that um, on that image that I showed earlier, it showed the candlesticks for price activity in the day. Um, and so the granularity is basically that parameter. It's basically how long you want that time period to be for that candlestick. So we want it to be a date, right? So I'm actually gonna, I can put one here, but as you can imagine, this granularity doesn't expect the number of days. You actually have to give it in seconds. So the number of seconds in a given day are 86,400. And I actually know that off the top of my head because I've had to do this a lot of times before with other programs. So uh, uh, that's a fun fact there. Right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to put this in a response JSON object. Even though the response doesn't come back in JSON, this will still um, get the response back in a way that makes it easier uh, for us to work with it. Now the data that this API gives back, if we take a look, um, as you can tell, it's an array. So you get back an array, but in that array, you get more arrays. So it's an array of arrays, and each one of these subarrays is actually a candlestick, right? It actually has all the data related to building one candlestick. So it has basically the time, so that's just the date. And then it has the lowest price uh, for that uh, uh, cryptocurrency. It has the highest price for that cryptocurrency. It has the opening price and the closing price and the volume, right? So each one of these subarrays has all of the uh, different price features that we mentioned uh, that constitute to building up a single candlestick. Now that we know that, it's all a matter of just putting um, the data in a format that we can work with. So essentially, I'm gonna create a few empty arrays. So I'm gonna create one called dates, um, and then I'll just duplicate that, and then we're gonna have lows, uh, highs, and these are just gonna store the arrays of data that comes back. So basically, what we want is an array of all the dates. We want an array of all the low prices. We want an array of all the high prices. Um, and that's just gonna make it easier to work with when we build the chart, right? And by the way, you can all do this, you can do all of this in one, a one-liner, but it's not gonna be a very readable one-liner in Python. And so uh, one of the philosophies in Python is write readable code, um, or explicit is better than implicit. So um, sometimes you actually write more code, but it's more readable, and that's the most important thing. So when you're running your Python, write your Python programs, just keep that in mind. Make sure you write, uh, focus on writing readable code. So now it's just a matter of iterating through all of the data that came back in response JSON. So I'm just gonna call this for candlestick data in response JSON. I'll copy that there. What we want to do is we want to extract out all the data and then put that into the uh, relevant arrays. So let's do that. So the first one is dates.append. I'm going to append to this. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to call the date time from timestamp function. And what this is going to do is uh, you give it a timestamp. So 
if we go back to the documentation, you know that we're being given uh, back a timestamp here. So we want to convert that into a more readable timestamp. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll give that a date time from timestamp and then we'll give it the candlestick data and it's uh, at the first position, right? So we're going to go through every single one of these rows and then we're going to extract out all the dates. And given that it's uh, timestamps, we're going to convert that into a date time object and we're going to append it to dates. Now, the rest of the values are less interesting. They don't need any other processing. It's just a matter of extracting it out. So we'll do lows.append followed by candlestick data. And we know that's at position one. And I'm just going to duplicate this and then I'm going to replace the lows. And that's going to be highs. And then this one's going to be opens and then closes. And then what we'll do is we'll just change the numbers because these are all at the uh, put them in the correct position. Right. So now that our data is ready in the uh, right format, now we need to build out the chart and we're going to use a library called Plotly to do that. Plotly is a great uh, Python library. I think they're also uh, available in other languages, too. But essentially, it's a library that allows you to easily build charts. So as you can tell here, you've got bar charts, line charts, pie charts. Um, and then you have all these other scientific charts. You've got plenty of charts, great library for that. And so we're going to actually make use of that library uh, to build the chart to show the candlesticks. Right. So let's import the Plotly library. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the top and let me import the other libraries while we're here. So import requests, of course. And then we're going to import from Plotly. Import graph objects. So that's the one we're going to be using. And then the other library that I want to import is the date time um, library. So in date time, import date time. And we'll install these later on in the program. Cool. So let's go about building the chart. And this is where it gets quite fun. So we're going to create a variable called um, figure. And we're going to have graph objects. And the idea is graph objects has a function called figure. And it takes a few parameters. Uh, the two parameters uh, that we're going to pass in that, will, that we care about are data and layout. Now, layout, you don't have to, but I just kind of want to show you a bit more about this library. And there's a good opportunity to do that. Of course, you can explore this in your own time, but um, I'll just show you uh, a bit more about that. So with data, what it does is it takes an array and this array is basically going to be all the different graph objects that you want to construct. Right. And luckily, there is an uh, another function available on graph objects and it's called candlesticks. And as you can guess, it makes it very or super easy to be able to create uh, candlestick graph objects and pass them into this data series. And that's really handy. And that's the reason why I think Plotly is a fantastic library because it has a lot of these out of the box and it makes it very easy and uh, quick to build out your chart. So with the candlestick function, what you pass in is basically what uh, data you want across the x-axis. And in this case, we want the dates, right? So we want to be able to uh, see the dates across the x-axis. And then the other parameters, and by the way, of course, we have the dates array, and this is why it was useful to extract it out. And so the other parameters are going to be, as you can guess, open. So that's going to be all the opens. Uh, what I'll do actually is I'll just duplicate these. And then this is going to be the highs. And then we're going to have the lows. Um, the parameters that they accept, by the way, are singular. Um, but of course, we're giving it an array of data. That's why we're it's plural. But <laughs> well, that's what we're doing anyway. And uh, so that looks good, really. So that's how you construct uh, candlestick graph objects. You give it the series of data that looks like this. And so we're pretty much done for this data parameter. Let's look at the layout parameter. So the layout parameter, you don't actually have to provide it, but it does give you some functionality to edit the layout for the chart. And one of the things that it gives you is uh, the ability to edit the uh, title for the chart. And I think that's quite handy. So the way you construct a layout is you call graph objects, you pass in or you call the layout function, and this accepts a bunch of attributes. All we care about is the title. And then what do we want to change about the title, right? So this takes a dictionary and you can change uh, the font family. You can change uh, the uh, weight of the font, um, but more importantly, you can change a text too, right? So I'm just going to change a text and I'm going to say this is an ETH just USD daily chart. Um, and again, there's a few other options for you to be able to change a font family or, or you know, the font. And so uh, feel free to Google and check out the API. Um, actually, I'll include a link in the description below if you want to see what options you have uh, for constructing layouts. Right. And then to show the chart, all we have to do is call figure.show. Again, figure is the variable that's storing the uh, graph figure object that we created. 
And now all we need to do is uh, install the requirements and then we can give it a run. Now I've created a requirements.txt file here and it has two requirements. It has requests, which is the library to make the HTTP request out to the Coinbase API. And the other one is of course Plotly, which is gonna plot the chart. I highly recommend that you create a requirements.txt file like this, specify the version. So that way, if you were to send this program to a friend or transfer it to a different computer, you have uh, all the requirements that you need uh, to get the project up and running. Equally, you can, if you don't want to do that, just type pip install requests and pip install plotly and just install them and then you'll be good to go. Right, so one thing is I did make a small mistake here. When you call the uh, URL, when you're passing in the product, it's not ETH slash USD, it's ETH hyphen. So again, the trading pair um, needs to have a hyphen instead of a slash. It's funny, a single character like that will stop an entire program from working and every program has done it. <laughs> so uh, other than that, the program looks good, so let's give it a run. Right, so I've got the project opened up in Terminal, so all I do is type pip install dash r requirements.txt and that will install all the requirements for the project and then python main.py and this is always my favorite part of the uh, every python project video because you get to see the results of the code and here we've got an interactive chart of the ethereum prices going back for the past year and here i can zoom in i can see each candlestick and the price data now this is a daily candlestick chart so if i hover over one of these candles you can see the date right so october 12th october 13th and then what you can see is basically the opening price the high uh, price, the low price, the closing price, and all of that you get from the candle. And of course, what you can also do is you have this nifty slider at the bottom here that allows you to expand the time range. So I can show the past couple of months, but equally I can show the last uh, seven or so days. So if I uh, move that towards the right, as you can tell, the time series is uh, contracting at the bottom. So as you can see the past seven days, so that looks good. Um, and then all the historical price, I don't think it will give you the current week. I think it will give you everything uh, before or the previous week um, is my understanding from the API, but that's still good. And then if I expand this back out for the past, um, it's grouped by month, and then you have the candlestick here, and then you have some options at the top here that allow you to adjust the settings so you can download this plot as a PNG, and that's really handy because you can share this to a friend and say, hey, this is what Ethereum's doing. It's just going for an upwards trend and you know it's hit 1800 and it's probably going to hit three grand um this is not financial advice but i'm just letting you know um what the shot chart is showing um so you can download as a png you can maximize you can select boxes on here um, which is quite cool if you want to center on uh, into specific uh, parts of the charts um if you're explaining this to someone maybe you do some sort of analysis and then you have other options that are worth exploring uh, in your own time that's it i hope you enjoyed the video if you're learning python and you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe and tap the bell icon so you get notified as soon as i release the next video tutorial thanks a lot for watching have a lovely day and i'll see you in the next video peace